Good morning, cadets. I am Sergeant Robin Ivan Yap. I will be your instructor for this morning. Our subject for today will be core values. All right. These are these are the scope. Introduction to Philippine Army's vision and mission. Right. Three Army core values, AFP core values, the profession of arms and military professionalism, pledge of loyalty. Vision, achieve and maintain professional organization worthy of public trust and respect, faithful to its constitutional mandate. Mission, protect people's sovereignty of the state, democratic institutions, and integrity of institutional territory. So, uh, mission and vision is not only in, in the military. Technically, it's also in schools or in jobs or whatever company you are going to be working for in the future. So it is important because these, the mission and vision actually state, uh, uh, actually states where the direction of the company or, or the direction of the group goes to or what they are all about, especially of the culture and how they go about doing things. Right. These are the three Army Corps values. Honor, which brings under it other values of personal dignity and self-worth, integrity, and discipline. So technically, guys, if you are going to be working uh, professionally after you graduate for whatever course you're taking right now, uh, honor is very important because I have, uh, in what I have experienced even in with American companies, you could go wrong with a lot of things, but just don't don't make mistakes about integrity, uh, because uh, integrity or honor, because that has something to do with you as a person already. Like uh, you have to take responsibility to whatever job you're doing, especially if you're handling money, you're handling equipment. So yeah, it has something to do with. Uh, with your personal dignity already if it comes to that sort of thing. Okay, next is patriotism, which resonates as love of country and also includes loyalty, courage, and allegiance to the Constitution. So patriotism. Patriotism and love actually goes hand in hand because technically, uh, just, uh, as I would say, you know, as in, in the Bible, so... Jesus came here on earth because of love for us. He wouldn't go bother to go down here, suffer, and die for our sins if it wasn't for love. So love of us. So for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. For those who believe in him shall not perish, but uh, enjoy everlasting life. So then duty includes professionalism and excellence, resourcefulness and dynamic dynamism and dedication and co commitment so duty involves commitment and uh, excellence so excellence and commitment actually these both go hand in hand and you have to be dynamic dynamic means you cannot be stasis you cannot stay there you have to move forward that's why that you need to be dynamic for you to be uh, for you to be successful, you have to increase. You cannot, merely not decreasing is not enough. You have to increase or you have to improve of whatever, whatever craft you have. Okay, AFP core values. All right. AFP core values. I want to give an example to my people that I write not for myself nor for my glory, but for my country. Hence, I prefer truth to fame. May my countrymen also sacrifice their passions for the welfare of the country. May they not seek their good in honors, employments, bribes, and adulations, but in virtues that distinguish and adorn free people. So technically, uh, this is one of the most... Uh, Important things that Dr. Sarasal said about uh, about 
you know, about uh, principle. You have to be a man of principle because technically when he was in exile, he got to meet Andres Bonifacio in one, on, in one of his travels and he, Andres Bonifacio actually um, offered to help him escape. But since Dr. Serizal is a man of principle, he didn't. He actually declined the offer because it is actually uh, it would make him look like he did something wrong if he actually tried to run, regardless of his of if, if he is going to be judged as guilty or or innocent. Right. AFP core values. The Philippine Army core philosophy focuses on values that are the basis of the soldier's daily existence. It is the foundation of all his acts and deeds. These are the, the ties that bind. With the country moving forward in nation building, these values have shown their enduring quality and have provided the soldier with time-tested tools for the future. So because of, these, uh, because of the, uh, the Army Corps values, it, state, it states here that it is tested uh, it's been tested through time. So, from our forefathers, from the re war, the Revolutionary War, from World War II, from Korea, from Vietnam, and from conflicts right now uh, in in Zamboanga and in uh, most recently in the Marawi siege. So, these core values are very important to our constitution. It's been passed down. The spirit of our forefathers has been passed down from, from, uh, from history until, until the present. Okay, love of country. It is for the country that a soldier willingly commits to a life of service. This is the highest value that the Filipino soldier possesses. It is not measured by money or rank or possessions. It endures through him and is kept alive by those after him. It is the energy that drives the soldier as the defender of national sovereignty. He stands by his oath of service with a stout heart, knowing that even if he is ultimately left standing alone or when dying in the battlefield, he rests content with the thought that his reason for existence has been fulfilled. It is the love of country that pervades every citation of valor for deserving soldiers valor that further uplifts the spirit of the nation. As I've said, those core values have been passed down through history from our ancestors, from those who fought the Spaniards, from those, oh uh, no, from those who fought, yeah, Spaniards, from the Americans, through, through our current, current conflicts right now, th their spirit has been, uh, has been passed on through our soldiers and through the pe Filipino people up to this day. All right. Valor flows naturally from one's love of country. It is the power and strength, courage and ability to overcome fear in carrying out one's mission. Courage is beyond bravery. It is pursuing a mission against all odds. It is calculating but not suicidal. With courage, you do what is right. So, valor and love. All right. Since I've said before, love is one of those highest, highest virtues, or shall you say, feeling. So, it, it is what makes people do extraordinary things because of love of country, uh, love of victory, maybe love of self, or love of blank. So, uh, love is. Love actually has a very, very big part on, on, on valor as well, especially if the odds are against you, love will rise and you will do extraordinary things. Uh, not even, you wouldn't even think of yourself doing that, but because of love, you can do, uh, you can do those extraordinary things. Honor. Is the military's crowning value the hallmark of military conduct, the quality of the soldier's consciousness of personal dignity and self-worth? From pre prelude and campaign to the aftermath, the soldier carries his honor in meeting the military imperative. Honor. 
is uh, it says here is it is the military's crowning value. It's not only in the military that honor that honors being very very treasured. It it's also treasured in your relationships with your friends, relationships with your workmates, or it's also very much treasured in your workplace. Eventually, if you guys would be uh, working working in your respective companies once you graduate, so it, it is uh, skills can be learned, but uh, your uh, your honor is very very hard to come by actually even at this day and age loyalty underlies the soldier's oath of service it demands obedience to the legal prerogatives of duly constituted authority functions of such offices in the pursuit of the nation's interest observance of the chain of command and compliance with the orders of the best of one's ability as all orders must be obeyed loyalty while itself a cause reaps the harvest of military unity so loyalty it's where as it states here it actually states uh loyalty but not blind loyalty so loyalty to the const uh, constitution loyalty to the process or due process so like observance of chain of command and whatever uh whatever processes that you have to go through to uh, to do something so loyalty to that so what you're fighting for is for that process and for that uh, for the chain of command for everything that you're actually uh, you have to be loyal to so duty is not imposed it derives its authority from the soldier's steadfast commitment to the service of the country Duty is a continuous process that is cultivated by both the challenges faced on the job as well as the discipline in, in the service. Duty is exercised in peace when in support of all legal initiatives of the civilian authority, more so in war that may take the very life of the person himself. So duty is uh, very important because negligence of that can actually uh, get an organization into big trouble or yes uh, big trouble especially in the military where lives are on the line as well so as well as actually, actually people in the medical field as well can relate to this but yes duty is very important so it can cost lives as well as uh, trouble to whatever organization you in your you are in that's why it's very important to have a sense of duty to whatever you're doing. Solidarity. Comrade and brotherhood. All for one, one for all. Solidarity binds the, the army to oneness with aspirations of the rest of the country in the manner of a Philippine, Filipino proud of his country. So solidarity. From a moment uh, cadet, especially officers, would be trained all soldiers, cadets, and uh, officers are trained with solidarity. It, it shows through punishments. Like if one of them has fault, everyone gets punished. Because remember, every, in an organization the, or, the, or in any group, your weakest chain, you're as only as strong as the weakest chain. So no matter how, how strong the chains are, but there's just one weak one it's going to get cut okay right the profession of arms and military professionalism right general statement the members of the afp are public servants who are oath bound to fulfill the loyalty mandate of the constitution the peculiarity of uh, of military service which requires the right to bear arms calls for a corresponding assurance of professionalism from every military man so uh, as I've uh, as you have heard uh, a lot of times with great power comes great responsibility especially more in the AFP where you are in the profession of arms so you have to be very, very responsible you have to have good ethics and morals that are instilled into into uh, from the highest to the lowest ranking personnel 
professionalism, the expert application of specialized skills based on an organized body of knowledge and in accordance with laws and or ethics with the highest degree of excellence in the accomplishment of the mission. Professionalism. With these, actually, uh, this is where your code of ethics come into play, how you go about doing things. So this is not just for a soldier, but for everyone who is actually working or have people under him. So you have to have professionalism. Military professionalism, okay. Uh, what I'm about to read here is actually what a soldier endures. So uh, here it goes. Men who adopt the profession of arms submit of their own free will to a law of perpetual constraint of their own accord. They reject their right to live where they choose, to eat what they want, to dress as they like. From the moment they become soldiers, it needs but an order to settle them from this place, to move them to that, to separate them from their families, and dislocate their normal lives. In the world of command, in, in the word of command, in the world of command, they must rise, march, run, endure bad weather, go even without food and sleep, and be isolated in some distant post. They cease to be the masters of their own fate. If they drop on their tracks and their ashes are scattered in the four winds, it is all part and parcel of their job. Standards of Military Professionalism Every member of the AFP shall observe the following as guidelines in the discharge discharge of their official duties. Standard of loyalty. All military personnel shall be loyal and true to the Republic of the Philippines. The Constitution, the AFP, and the people, and to, and to the people at all times. They shall obey the duty, constituted authority, and abide by laws. Legal orders, good morals, good customs, and promote order and public safety. Standard of competence. All military personnel must possess the knowledge, skill, physical attributes, and character traits necessary to attain outstanding performance of duty and accomplishments of the mission. With the standard of loyalty, you have to, you have, to have all of these uh, to protect the, the Republic of the Philippines, the Constitution, where all our rights are on, and the armed forces of the Philippines where he is a part of, which is very important if we want our country to go forward. Standard competence. That's why in the military we have standards, standards of how we do things, especially standards in physical fitness, standards in marksmanship, standards in wearing of the uniform, and standards of conduct. So it's all very important. Standard of ethics. The military community is a part of a larger society, the Filipino society. Hence, every military personnel must observe and conform to the accepted principles of right conduct being observed in the society of which he, he or she is part of. Among those principles of right behavior expected in the Philippine society and other civilized society are honesty, justice, truthfulness, and concern for others. Honesty should be practiced in all dealings with persons and material resources. Military personnel shall render service to everyone regardless of his status in life. Right. Uh, his or her word is taken on face value because he is not supposed to tell a lie. He or she should know, show concern for the well-being of others, include uh, a this includes the enemies who have surrendered or have been captured. He, she must be trusted, uh, be, must be a trusted steward of resources under his care. So technically, uh, regardless of your religion, regardless of your culture, regardless of where you are from, everyone agrees that everyone should be honest and then there's justice, there's truthfulness because all these things 
if none of these are there, the, the, organization, the organization will actually collapse because not every, uh, the, your work will not be as productive as, as someone who would be practicing all of these things. All right, standard of morals. Man is a rational being. Man is also a moral being who is given the capacity to determine what is right and do it and what is wrong and avoid it. In a society, there are accepted practices, customs, and traditions which are necessary in the ordering of communities such as respect of elders and authority, fidelity to an oath and or vow. It is therefore expected of a soldier to represent his superiors, peers, and subordinates. He must be faithful to all his pledge as an as a soldier to serve his country above self. When married, he or she must be faithful and true to his or her vow of fidelity to, to uh, wife or husband. He must not only protect his personal honor, but that of others as well. Transparency and openness must characterize the dealings, transactions of every soldier. However, in such situations, he must not lose sight of the fact that there are certain matters, information, which must be safeguarded because they involve the security of the state. With morals, there must be a standard. The reason why we have our police, the reason why we have our military is because when uh, morality becomes subjective. By that, I mean if we are having a discussion right now, and we are talking about a certain subject or we are actually arguing about something, I, some people would just zing a knife through your head and, or your neck and that would, be, that would be his answer. So we have to have a standard of morals. That's the reason why the military exists. That's why the, the police exist is if more, uh, subjective morality happens. So it, that, that's, that said, it is very dangerous to say that what is right for me is wrong for you and what's wrong for you is right for me, so you have to live with it. No, that's not. That is a very, very dangerous doctrine or it's a very, very dangerous uh, code to live by. There has to be a standard of morality because even as we speak, people would throw homosexuals off rooftops. Because for them, that's right. Well, for us, of course, it's not. That's why we have to, it is very important to have a standard, especially in morals. All right, pledge of loyalty. If you work a man in heaven's name, work for him, speak well of him, and stand by the institution he represents. Remember, an ounce of loyalty is worth a pound of cleverness. If you must growl, condemn, and eternally find fault? Why not? Resign your position. And where you are in the outside, damn to your part of this institution. Do not condemn it. If you do, the first high wind that comes along will blow you away. And probably you'll never know why. All right. In your speech class or in your personal development class, they're going to teach you to, if you ever work for a company and then you're, you are going to uh, have a job interview because you're looking for another job into another company, you should never, never speak ill of, what, of the company you came from. That is a very big no. Like, yeah, pledge of loyalty. If you, not everyone, not ev all companies are perfect. No, actually, no company is perfect. But if you are going, don't speak ill, don't speak ill of, 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 of your company. So if you're going to be outside, just, if you have nothing to say, just, just keep quiet. Uh, especially if you're finding a job because uh, that's a very, very big minus if you actually speak ill of your job in front of your interviewer because eventually they're just going to think that you're going to do the same thing to them if you're going to look for another job. All right, uh, that concludes our subject. Thank you for listening, everyone.